So my name is Neve Morn. I'm the head of the School of Postgraduate Studies and I'm delighted to see so many of you here today. The college was established here in this building uh, in 1810. We consider ourselves to be an international organisation with, with Dublin headquarters. So then what do we do? Well, we do lots, right? We're not just a medical school. We have more than 100 courses available. We have a number of different medicine programmes. We have a five-year programme. We also have an accelerated four-year graduated programme and we have other longer ones that involve foundation years, etc. What we're here really to talk to you about are the postgraduate suite of opportunities that we have. Our flagship courses are our research courses which are PhD, MD, MSc and MCH and then we have our master's programmes and that's just a flavour of what we have. Hello everybody, my name is John O'Byrne, I'm Professor of Orthopaedic Surgery in uh, RCSI. I'm also the Director of the Master of Surgery programme. It is uh, delivered by people who are delivering Masters and delivering modules at a very high level. It's very focused towards what a, a junior doctor or trainee uh, wants and needs to know about. So the 3 partnership is a strategic partnership between DCU, Maynooth University and Royal College of Surgeons. So one of our flagship programmes and joint initiatives is the development of the joint 3U Masters in Engineering in Digital Health and Medical Technologies. This is a rapidly growing area. We see that the graduates of the Masters will be building and creating new tools and solutions to solve relevant problems facing the healthcare sector today. This course basically, if you look at ma the major ethical issues in healthcare, things like issues at the beginning of life, the ethical issues around them, some of the legal issues. So you might ask yourself, what can I do with this degree? And I know that some of the people who are past graduates of the course, when they were going for, for promotion to become consultants, etc., that this was quite an important element that came up in the interview. Just to say a little bit about the Institute of Leadership, it is unique in that it is probably the only institute in the country that offers postgraduate education in leadership and in management. But at the end of the Masters, you should have mastery in the whole area of managing healthcare organisations. I'm here representing the National University of Ireland. We have a number of different funding opportunities and scholarships available. Most of them are sort of at doctoral level at the moment, but we're constantly adding to our pool of awards. This year, the main ones that we're promoting are travelling studentships. They're for doctoral research. So this will cover the full cost of your PhD, and you would embark on some travel as part of your PhD. So I am a circadian biologist stroke immunologist. So what does the circadian biology stuff mean? Well, I work on the body clock and for those of you who have ever experienced jet lag, you know, that's a manifestation of your body clock. But as a researcher, what we're really interested in is understanding, well, what happens when the clock goes a bit wrong? Have you ever wondered what happens when you get a paper cut? Sure, we all notice blood, redness and a lot of pain. But what most of us don't realize is there's a flurry of activity going on inside. What happens when you have a larger wound, a broken bone or severely burnt skin that our body isn't able to heal, heal by itself? Biomaterials are made of natural or synthetic materials and can be used to help our body heal larger wounds. My current research experience is around looking at medicines in the population, what we call pharmacoepidemiology. So pharmacoepidemiology, what is it? It's the study of medicines and their effects in large populations. It's looking at how medicines are used. IgA nephropathy is a disease which is caused by an antibody called IgA depositing in the glomerular, which results in inflammation of the glomerular and impairs their ability to properly filter the blood. Exome sequencing has made way for a new era of medicine. It has an unprecedented ability to both diagnose disease genetically and even change a person's diagnosis. Let's start with the tissues. I'm interested in cervical radiculopathy and looking at a cross-section of somebody's neck. The clinical picture is a bit like sciatica of the arm and it, it's associated with very nasty pain. The primary research question is whether or not an early intervention of physiotherapy will help improve people's pain and disability. So I'm a mechanical engineer uh, originally. Uh, they turned into a biomedical engineer and now I have a research lab in anatomy. You might have heard of osteoporosis. This is basically about bones. So I'm interested in bones and how they break. And one of the major diseases that causes bones to break is osteoporosis. So uh, we try to understand how osteoporosis happens. It's a problem of the skeleton and how the skeleton maintains itself. 